Welcome to the Wine Math Series. I'm Jenny Savitz, and in this video, we're going to be going through some calculation for sorbic acid additions. If you'd like to skip the detailed explanation and head straight to an example, you can move ahead to the time points listed in the video description below. Let's get started. All right, a little background on sorbic acid. Uh, it's used primarily to prevent against yeast refermentation in wines that are bottled with residual sugar um, when they can't be sterile, um, filtered, and then sterile bottled. In a lot of small winery um, environments, sterile bottling isn't, um, isn't really an option, so we can use some uh, ascorbic acid addition to help prevent against that refermentation with wines that are sweet or have some amount of residual sugar. Uh, so sorbic acid inhibits wine yeast, but it doesn't kill them. So it just helps prevent refermentation and it does not prevent bacteria or some yeast spoilage. So that's why it's really important to keep up our um, values of sulfur dioxide based on pH. Um, at the time of bottling to make sure that we're protecting against um, bacteria spoilage as well. Uh, and some other key points about sorbic acid is that it's more effective in a low pH and higher alcohol environment. And that pH range is 3.0 to 3.7. And that alcohol content is anything greater or equal uh, than 10%. So if you had a wine with alcohol below 10% and a pH above 3.8, it would be really difficult for uh, the sorbic acid to help prevent refermentation just due to the environment in the wine. Something else to keep in mind is that there's a common addition range. There's no chart that tells you exactly based on your pH and alcohol content what you should add. So you have a little bit of flexibility and you need to decide that, that sorbic acid addition rate. Uh, but a range that you can use as a rule of thumb is 150 to 250 milligrams per liter sorbic acid. And then something else to, to keep in mind is that there is a TTB limit for sorbic acid. And that is 300 milligrams per liter sorbic acid. And I keep mentioning sorbic acid because what we actually add to deliver the sorbic acid is potassium sorbate. And we'll get to that in a minute. Um, but we just really need to keep straight when we're saying sorbic acid and when we're talking about potassium sorbate. All right, before we get to that, I want to make a couple notes about units. We have PPMs, which you may be familiar with, parts per million. Um, we also talk a lot um, often the rates are in milligrams per liter. And sometimes these are used interchangeably because one part per million is equivalent to one milligram per liter. So those can be used interchangeably. I'm gonna try to stick to milligrams per liter in this, uh, ex the examples that I do on this video just to keep um, our units straight. But you may see um, in other literature or sources, PPMs. And so just want you to know that's equivalent. And then another important um, unit that we need to note uh, is that we're gonna have to be putting, a lot of times we work in terms of gallons in the winery, but for this equation, we're gonna convert to liters. So one gallon is equal to 3.785 liters. So something to keep in mind, we'll be using that conversion factor. Okay, so I mentioned that sorbic acid um, is what actually provides the antimicrobial protection uh, against yeast refermentation, um, but it's not as soluble in wine. So um, we add it in the form of its potassium salt, which is potassium sorbate, and its chemical formula is C6H7KO2, and it contains 74% sorbic acid. So potassium sorbate contains 74% sorbic acid. And this we need to keep in mind. I'm gonna highlight that for you. Because 
um, if you would add up the weight of the elements in the compound of potassium sorbate, 74% by weight uh, would be sorbic acid, and the remaining um, is attributed to the, the potassium salt. So this needs to be accounted for in our equation when we're determining the rate of sorbic acid we want to add, but we're adding potassium sorbate. So for example, if we were going to add one gram of sorbate, that provides 0.74 grams of sorbic acid. So in our equation, we will account for that. All right, so we're gonna have our mass of sorbate is what we want to figure out. So we're gonna need our sorbic acid rate, and that's gonna be in milligrams per liter. And then to account for the fact that it's, um, there's 74% sorbic acid in potassium sorbate, we're gonna divide our rate by 0.74. We'll multiply by our liters of wine. And we'll remember here that one gallon is equal to 3.785 liters. And then we have a unit conversion of grams, uh, milligrams to grams. And then that, uh, when we're able to cross out units, we'll end up our, our mass of sorbate will be then in grams. So we can use this equation um, when we have an example or we're working in the cellar and we need to add some sorbate. So I have an example here on the next page. We can go ahead and give it a shot. We have a 400 gallon batch of wine. It's sweetened and ready to bottle. The winemaker wants to add 175 milligrams per liter of sorbic acid. So that's the sorbic acid rate. It's already been determined by the winemaker. So we don't need to make that choice. We're gonna use that to calculate the amount of sorbate to add. So our mass of sorbate is going to be equal to our rate, which is sorbic acid rate, which is 175 milligrams per liter, over our factor of 0.74 to account for the fact that potassium sorbate contains 74% sorbic acid. Then we're going to need our volume of wine, so we have 400 gallons And we're going to use uh, the fact that 3.785 liters is equal to one gallon. And then our unit conversion of grams, uh, milligrams to grams. So there is one gram is equal to a thousand milligrams. So if we clean this up a little bit, we have 175 milligrams per liter divided by 0.74 gives us 236.4 milligrams per liter. And 400 gallons times 3.785 liters per gallon gives us 1,514 liters of wine. And then one over 1,000. Okay, now we can cross out some units. Our milligrams cross out, our liters cross out. So when we finish up the math, we will end up with our answer in grams, which is what we want. Okay, so if we do 236.4 times 1,514 divided by 1,000, we end up with 358 grams sorbate to add. So we'll add this uh, right before bottling, make sure it's mixed, um, mixed in and dissolved really well. And then you could go through your final sterile filtration and into the bottle to help prevent against a re-fermentation. Okay, I have one more example for us to work through here. And this one's a little bit different because this time we need to determine the sorbic acid rate. So um, in the information, we have the alcohol percentage as well as the pH to help us um, determine somewhere um, in the range up to not more than 300 
milligrams per liter of sorbic acid because that's the uh, TTB legal limit. So we have a 500 gallon of batch of wine with 11% alcohol and a pH of 3.2. The residual sugar uh, is gonna be 2%. So we need to determine our sorbic acid rate and the amount of sorbate to add. So if you'll remember from our background info on sorbate, we can use less sorbate. The pH is in a good range, three to 3.7, and the higher the alcohol, um, the better. So we have a good amount of alcohol, 11%, and a pretty low pH. So I think we can use the low end um, of that um, common range. And that was 150 milligrams per liter. Again, um, there's nothing set in stone here. You have to make the choice, but due to the low pH and the, the alcohol in a good range, uh, we're gonna go with a lower amount of sorbic acid to add. All right, so now that we know our addition rate, we can do our calculation again, just like before. So we have our mass of sorbate is equal to our sorbic acid rate of 150 milligrams per liter. That's gonna be over our factor of 0.74 to account for the fact that there is 74% uh, sorbic acid in potassium sorbate. We have 500 gallons, which we will convert to liters. 3.785 liters, one gallon. And there are 1,000 milligrams equivalent to one gram. All right, so we clean this one up a little bit. 150 divided by 0.74 gives us 203 milligrams per liter. We take 500 gallons times 3.785 liters per gallon. We end up with 1,893 liters. And then one gram equal to 1,000 milligrams. We can cross out milligrams, cross out liters. Our answer will be in grams, which is what we want. So 203 times 1,893 divided by 1,000 gives us an addition of 384 grams of sorbate. This brings us to the end of our sorbic uh, acid additions video. Thanks for watching the wine math video. If you have any questions about the math or this general wine topic that we covered today, please feel free to reach out to us at wine at iastate.edu. And be sure to check out the other wine math videos to improve your math skills in the cellar. Thanks.